Hello everyone. Okay, so I took part um, a couple of weeks ago in the All Together IPA Brew Day, organised by Richard Williams, aka Dude Brews. I didn't take any video of the Brew Day because I was kind of flitting in between looking after the kids and everything else. Um, so I'm just doing a little video now to update you, kind of let you know what I did. Um, and go from there really. So I've got the recipe basically. I've got my phone resting on my laptop and then my laptop behind with all the stuff on. So um, I might have to scroll a little bit. So awesome production values as always. So uh, here we go. Right. So the recipe, first of all. So I went for the New England IPA version of the recipe. However, I didn't have everything to hand. It was a bit of a last minute decision to do the brew day. So I kind of had to adapt somewhat as we do as home brewers. So first of all, we had uh, 200 grams of carapils, 3.8 of Amaris Otter, 700 grams of flaked oats, which is quite a lot less. I think it was about 1200 they recommend, but again, that's all I had. And obviously it's not very easy to go out at the moment. So I stuck in 500 grams of maltodextrin to make up for the lack of oats. I also put in 250 grams of flaked barley to try and compensate. I put 100 grams of rice hulls in just because there was some adjuncts about. And then hop wise, I had to do um, slightly different as well because I think it was, was it Columbus you were supposed to use? And I ended up using. Sorry guys, this is shit, isn't it? Right, here we go. So I use Citra Cascade and Mosaic. Um, I think it was Citra Cascade and Columbus or Centennial, another sea hop basically you were supposed to use. So again, I love a sea hop. So uh, seven grams of Citra, 60 minutes, 30 grams of Cascade at 20 minutes, 19 grams of Mosaic, 12 minutes. And then dry hop, 50 grams each of Cascade, Citra and Mosaic. Um, I dry hop for four days, so I do two days, pretty much wait for it once to finish fermenting, then I do two days, then cold crash for two days, and then keg it. So yeah, it's kind of dry hop for four days, as it were. Um, and yeast, I use, I didn't have that Imperial, whatever it was, I use the Cross My Loof Haze yeast, which I won from a Timmy Jenkins raffle, which was, so interesting to see how that comes out as well. Um, so that was the, the um, brew day was fairly uneventful really, it went quite well. Um, I was under on the OG slightly. I think I was um, 1064 and it was 1068, 1070 I think I was shooting for. Um, but it fermented down quite a bit more than I anticipated. I think I'd, uh, I'd planned about 72, 73% attenuation here. It was 77. So I was aiming for an ABV of 6.3. I actually got 6.6 .6 in the end. Um, final gravity was 1.014. Uh, it was 20 litre batch. Um, no, 19 litre batch, sorry, beg your pardon. Basically, um, I've found with New England IPAs, if you try and keg them, sorry, Kegging them is great, as you probably know, there are issues when you bottle them in terms of oxidization, etc. And I did it before, and they and the ones in the bottles, I admitly I did try and drink them as faster, but again, you've got to wait a couple of weeks from the condition by which time, you yeah, know, we're in lockdown, guys. I'm not, it's not gonna be hanging around this keg, even though it is 6.6%. Um, so that was that, um, yeah, so. I kegged it uh, two days ago. Well, not complete days ago. So, not yesterday. Uh, um, what day? We're Friday today. I kegged it Wednesday afternoon about 3 o'clock. Um, put it to about 12 psi. So, I've not massively cranked up the AE, um, psi like I normally do. I normally crank it to about 30 and then leave it for a couple of days. I thought I'll just leave it at 12 and let it sort of gradually do its thing. Um, I find sometimes at the moment with my kegs, when I get to near the end, they come really frothy and over carbonated. So I'm not sure what that's all about. Uh, possibly, I don't know if I put too much pressure at the top, I don't know. Or maybe it's just there's more pressure pushing down, so it, I don't know. Um, 
so that's that really so yeah like i said obviously with these types of beers you drink them young so i have her here that is a that's so funny the color never looks the same on camera does it and i'll try i can't get it too close because um i'll pour it all over my keyboard because my phone is resting on my laptop but this is she pretty murky you can see you can't see much through there at all which is what we like um color is really good actually it actually looks slightly better on the camera i think but it's really got that kind of orange juice look to it which is what we want um and aroma wise yeah i mean you've got what you it's so funny you can't I think I'll be a bit of a bunged up nose at the moment anyway, but uh, it's really funny that the hops are really, I guess I do 50 grams of each, they are really well balanced, you can't make out, you've got the citrusy, very much sort of peachy slightly as well, but yeah, no, aroma on that is really good. Um, but let's get to the taste test and see where we're going. Oh, IBUs was 20. Uh, bloody hell. What was I shooting for IBU wise? I think it was 25. I don't like a lot of bitterness in my New England IPAs. In fact, I'm not a massive fan. Oh, I, oh no, tell a lie. Sorry, 39. <laughs> okay. I must have forgot to miscalculate that. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'll shut up now and just have a drink. Oh, that's damn good. Right, okay, I think what happened is I must have rejigged something with the hops and then forgot to adjust the ABV again because it was slightly... slight taste of bitterness in the initial intake which um i wasn't expecting so again that took me by surprise a bit but actually it's actually quite nice and i don't know i guess if it's too sweet because things a lot of time i don't this is only the second new england ipa i've ever drunk i'm just gonna put it down now because i'm like eh. um and the problem is i find what problem it's that again it's the first new england apa only the second one i've brewed the first one didn't work out that well it was too thin and I used to fight yeast and it wasn't really a good idea but I was a bit up against it I didn't have a lot of other yeast in it at the time so obviously they have a high ABV which um, but normally I, I don't not had a huge amount I tend to buy the cans of stuff you get in Tesco or in the local bottle shops you've got one can of that and then that's it so I tend to quite like them quite sweet but I think if you're drinking I mean you don't want to have too many of them um, you know three probably four tops in a night I'd be on my ass. Um you would struggle I think if it was too sweet maybe to drink more than one or two so I mean it's not exactly sessionable anyway this is actually a small glass this is my um, my little I'm not sure what size they are oh it's all up so a half pint to line, and then there's a bit more, so probably about, a, yeah, just over half a pint. Again, that's quite good for this, because I find, because it's in the garage as well, if you do a pint, you're like, eh, or I'll have another one, eh, and I guess psychologically speaking, if you've got a small glass, you're like, oh, I've had two beers, or I've had three beers, rather than, you know, a pint is a lot for a six and a half, 6.6 .6 beer, you need to go easy on that, so I think this is a good compromise. So yeah, initial business hit is there. Mouthfeel is really, gets that nice sort of dryness at the end. Um, Mouthfeel is really good, it's really like, mm, really nice. Um, it's not as overpowering with hop aroma as I thought it would be to be quite honest. Now that the top's gone down, I'll stick my nose in a bit more. 
Yeah, I don't... That's weird. I mean, there's 150 gram dry hop in there. I think maybe I need to up it to 200. And maybe just two hop varieties. I don't know if maybe they're... they're um, cancelling each other out a bit, potentially. Um, but I'm planning on doing another New England IPA soon. A lower ABV one, so I'll see how I go with that. But yeah, the body is good. It's The last one I did, I sent a bottle to Timmy Jenkins, as we know, is the Nipah King. And he said the body was a bit thin. Um, and he was right. You know, he knows his stuff. And he was right. So again, I put that down to the yeast a lot of it, and I didn't have as much oats in there. So yeah, I've definitely ramped that up. The flake barley, the oats, the maltodextrin. That's all really just building on that, which is good. But... It was all said and done, that's a scary, sessionable beer. The alcohol is not coming through on that at all. It doesn't taste, it tastes like my 5%, in terms of strength, alcohol strength, it, it feels like my kind of 5% pale ale that I did. Which is a bit worrying because it's 1.6.6, so it's 1.6 ABV higher. Which, uh, oh, here we are getting old. Um, it's quite a lot. But there we go. Anyway, I've rambled on probably for nearly 12 minutes now. Um, but you know, you're all bored in lockdown, so what are you going to do anyway? You might as well watch me ramble on, as it were. Um, I did a little video about lockdown, I'm not going to go into it anyway, but... Yeah, just take care of yourself, guys. It's, it's tough, and you know, in the UK we're on week six. Almost finished week six, so we end of week six by Monday. And it's tough. I think we're all feeling it a bit now. It's a bit of a oh, scary at first, and you kind of accepted it. And then I sort of think, oh, it's quite nice now, actually. But, you know, even now I don't miss the work journey to work. But being sat up in the bedroom on my laptop for seven and a half hours a day by myself, mm, maybe getting a tiny bit lonely. It would be all right if I could go out. <laughs> And meet friends and stuff, I guess, you know, um, in the evening. But, you know, we've got Zoom. That Zoom thing with the the brew day was really good. Um, there's another brew day actually happening tomorrow. So I am going to pop in and say hi, hopefully at some point. But I'll, it's my morning to get up with the kids, so they'll be in tow. So um, I probably won't get much of a chance. I'll put my overnight mash on already. Um, anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you guys. Thanks for watching. Um, shout out to my new subscribers and also my old ones who uh, are still commenting in. Actually, no, I'm doing, I don't normally do big shout outs, name people, but this one person has been watching my YouTube videos. Pretty much sure they comment on every single one. And I think they've pretty much watched every single video, like literally from when I started in 2012. And that is Analog in Qatar. Don't know what your real name is, but thank you very much. This is a massive shout out to you uh, because I think you are my most loyal viewer. So, to Analog in Qatar. Cheers, mate. Anyway, peace out, guys, and I will see, hopefully, see some of you soon, those of you who have. YouTube videos, videos, channels, and if not, you will probably see me soon, hopefully. Take care, guys.